Hey everybody, this is Jeff Antoniak. Welcome to the live stream. This is number three in what's going to be a series of quite a few of these things. Um, check out the first video if you're at all interested, finding out sort of the context of what's going on here. I don't want to go through it every time, but basically I have a big gig coming up with the Baltimore Symphony in December, five gigs actually. And I've got a boatload of music to prepare. Uh, turns out it's 93 pages. So there's a lot of music to prepare, and uh, it's pretty demanding. There's a lot of solo stuff, cadenza stuff, improvising stuff. And I thought it would be interesting that as I'm practicing all this music to uh, take folks through it and just sort of talk a little bit about my process and how I learn and how I'm going to get this under my fingers. And I'm very interested in knowing uh, your thoughts on it or if this is valuable to you or um, how, how you learn this stuff too. It's just, you know... Showing what happens behind the scenes, I guess, is what this is about. So I was looking through the music for some of the kind of complicated finger buster stuff. And uh, <clears throat> what I came up with was most of it being baritone saxophone parts, it turns out. I haven't played baritone saxophone in a long time. Like, uh, I've played a total of maybe an hour or two in the last two decades. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So i got some work to do. So not only dealing with the horn, but today I want to just talk about... Um, how I'm learning some of this music. So I've seen this piece, I guess I looked at it maybe a week or 10 days ago and that's it. So this is actually movement 12E from the Nutcracker. And this is one that Duke Ellington arranged for his big band. My friend Paul Murtha has reorchestrated it for the BSO. So let me just see if I can sort of sight read this from the beginning, finding out about what my tempo is. And you actually may uh, recognize this movement a little bit. things I need to work on here. I need to loop that. All right. Well, if I were going to be teaching this, um, always doing things in time. If at all possible, I want to practice things in time. And I like looping little sections. None of this is my own invention. Everybody does it this way. But taking a measure and looping it over and over again. Part of it is I'm trying to get the right notes and the right rhythms. Then we're dealing with our instrument and try to make it speak right and be in tune and everything else like that. Let me try this again. <laughs> squeaks there. Uh, so, you know, there's instrument stuff that is going to have to happen too. But right now, I'm just trying to take care of learning some of these notes here. So here's some uh, particularly ugly stuff. Let me show you this. Uh, yeah, you know, a bunch of racing stripes on those notes. So, um, an idea that I use a lot in my playing and in my teaching is the idea of playing something at regular time and then at half time. So essentially having two tempos that you practice at. Um, so let me see, uh, again, like I haven't seen this for 10 days or something. This is going to be pretty nasty, I bet. But I'm going to try to play it somewhat in time. <laughs> Just so you know, I missed about three quarters of those notes. I got the rhythms pretty well. But uh, so now, instead of playing at that regular time, I'm going to play exactly half time. Now let me see if I can play it back to double time. 
the idea of going back and forth, single time, double time. Now I need to look at some of these accidentals too. <laughs> tapping my foot at the same tempo and playing half time and then regular time and not in between. So I'm playing the same measure over and over again. I know you can't tell that, but same measure over and over again, single time, double time. So here's half time. It's a really great practice technique, and I use that process a lot when I'm learning ugly stuff. And I learned this actually from a concert pianist who would have his students only practice at the written tempo and at half tempo. And uh, I think playing at the written tempo gives us the full context of the music and the velocity and what it's supposed to sound like, how it's supposed to groove. Uh, but of course, it's impossible to play. So then when we go to half tempo, I think a lot of times that's much slower than I would ever play it myself. I'd slow it down some, right? But this, this half tempo business makes me slow it down much further than I would. And I can really see what's going on, figuring out what's going on with my fingers, my embouchure, anything else. Um, and you leave the metronome set at one place so you're not messing around with moving stuff like that. So let me, uh, let me try the next measure like this. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to spend some more time. I've got about 10 bars of that. And this going back and forth is a really, really valuable thing. So uh, me and this uh, huge piece of metal are going to get back to work. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Again, my name is Jeff Antoniak. Just sort of talking about how I learn stuff. Uh, we all do things a little bit differently. And I think sharing the process, that, that's interesting to me. Process of how anything gets done is interesting to me and uh, hopefully this is valuable I'd love to know your thoughts on it if I'm gonna be doing about 20 more of these videos talking about everything from specific saxophone things to all the improvising and cadenzas I have to do to equipment to everything else so if there's anything you'd like to know I'd love to know about that and uh, yeah so lots more to come uh, you can find this at the YouTube channel this is all gonna be archived uh, if you go to Jeff Antoniak educator I have two different YouTube channels go to the educator one and uh, look at it, check it out, and if you think this may be of interest to somebody you know, a musician or a student, fabulous, uh, just sort of want to start the conversation about what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, you know, all the videos we see are great musicians showing off, and that's great. I love showing off too, but uh, how about if we just talk about how we get there? That's interesting to me. All right, y'all.